where is he? Don't be jealous. <laughs> yeah, we don't worry anyone. We, uh, yeah, we got that. I didn't know we, I didn't know I had one. It's been that long since you guys met. Not funny. We just took lanes and flipped it around. And That's fine. Okay. Didn't only meet at five, right? No. Usually we. How come we meet at five? Don't we usually meet at six? Five. Was it first it's time? been five, five for the last couple of years, but it was six before. It then. was six when it was in person. Five makes more sense, huh? I'm okay. It's you. We used to do it at six because people couldn't get here yeah, until six. I rather six. Yeah. Is it easier five or six? Five. It's great. All right. <laughs>
It's 502? Yep, all right, it's 502. Let's call the meeting to order. They need a notice. He said he was He's monitoring, right? Okay. So. Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, Thank, you. Thank you. First thing on our agenda, we have variance for 105 wash. <laughs> Good afternoon, uh, George Collins from Collins Civil Engineering Group, um, representing uh, Ed Hutchins, who is to my left, who are right, it's uh, Deb from my office, she's sitting there for training purposes. Um, so basically what we've done is we're, we've uh, requested a variance uh, to allow a mixed use office and medical facility at uh, 105 Washington Street. Um, um, in, uh, we we're asking to be able to uh, allow this particular facility based on um, actual water usage of the facility rather than the Title V design criteria. This is something that we have done in the past. Um, the, um, currently, uh, I, I, submitted, I submitted some paperwork showing the floor that, showing that the, uh, a couple things, the actual flow the, the water, the current water usage, and one of those, the one high number is act. It's not even a high number. Is uh, from the June reading, but what that is is that we they just put the system in. And they've been trying to get grass to grow, so they've actually been. I think that number we could actually throw that number out. Uh, the the June number, the sixty eight oh seven, which results in two hundred twenty six gallons a day. Um, and that's actually still even a very low number. Um, and, but uh, more than likely, if you look at the other numbers, it's 135 gallons a day, 110 gallons a day. And the system's designed for 900 gallons a day. Um, Mr. Hutchins also, he, he, he gave me a list of what all the units are being used for. There's a, a beauty spot. Which is microblading. Yeah, a skin, a skin care place. It's like sweet is uh, 1,400 square feet, that's empty. Is that the sweet? Sweet floor is empty, it's just the one. That's the one that we're trying to get, okay. Um, uh, PC guys, Amanda's Fitness, Quinn Insurance, Dan and Marshall Photography, and then there's another 500 square foot. Oh, okay, I, know the I was just empty. looking at what the building was. Yeah. I don't know, it's stuck in my brain. On the the old piano place. place. Yeah, okay. Pre Precision Home Realty, and Golf of New England. Uh, so, so basically, it's, it, there's nothing going on there. That's uh, that it's basically very small amount of people in the building. I think it's just using it's like a big house. Using the t using the you know just flushing the toilet and uh, maybe emptying a coffee pot in the sink occasionally, type of a thing. Um, so, and then basically, the um, the entity that wants to move in is actually a sink. It's a single nurse practitioner, and that uh, it's my understanding that individual. Um, they they just do one on one meetings with uh, with people and then quite often a lot of their visits are actually by Zoom, so uh, it's it's not you know it, the closest thing to a nurse practitioner would be a, a doctor's office uh, which what is that two two hundred fifty yes it's two hundred fifty gallons a day, uh, which would make sense if you had a doc and and actually that's per doctor. So it doesn't even talk about support staff or waiting rooms or anything. Like if you had a big doctor's facility with two doctors in it, you'd design for 500 gallons a day. This is literally uh, one individual that will have people coming in periodically during the day. And then um, they also indicated that a lot of their visits are actually done by Zoom. So it's really going to be functioning in, in an office, office uh, format. So. So basically, when we do design by, whenever we do evaluate things by water usage, we take the total number of gallons a day and we multiply that by two. Um, and um, so, in this particular case, if we were looking for some sort of a threshold to make sure that we stay below, it would it would be um, it would be half of the 900 gallons a day design flow, which would be 450 gallons a day. So again, we we. Even with the uh, lots, lots of irrigation in June, the high number that we had was 226 gallons a day. And then we would be looking at just adding this one more um, um, nurse practitioner 
office, which uh, based off of the description of how it's actually going to be used, um, you know, my opinion, it would, it would probably be more in line with an actual office usage. It's not your, it's not a conventional doctor's use. So when we when we can't plug in, when we're not able to plug an exact thing off of, from the Title V uh, regulations on design flow, sometimes we'll go take a look at something like this, just raw water usage, make sure that the system is adequate for what we're proposing to use it for. So in my opinion, you know, even if we had a, even if we had a hundred percent increase in water usage, we would still be below that, uh, again, the design flows for 900, so if we were looking for some sort of a monitoring threshold, um, I would say four, anything greater than 450 gallons a day, um, I still wouldn't be worried about using 450 gallons a day, but, but still, if we, if, if we were to agree this evening to allow this, I think a, a threshold that we would be looking for would be the uh, that 450 mark. That would be my recommendation. And again, that's the 200 percent rule. So mm -hmm. if you're using 450 gallons a day, you design for 900. So I'm actually backing those numbers. How old's the system? It's brand now? new. Okay. Uh, it just went in. The last 2022. Year. Yeah. Just oh, okay. 2022. Yeah, and we did. You know, it's a. Uh, yeah. I don't, know, I don't know if state of the art is the right no, word, but it's but it is an old school pipe and stone system with a two compartment tank. Um, so I do I do it's uh, gravity. So I think this would be more than sufficient. Uh, for, I, I think the system is uh, bigger than it needs to be. But uh, and then the other thing, just to point out, is we did notify uh, the uh, the director Butters. Uh, we have got the actual green cards, but this is all posted on Permadize. So we did notify the abutters about the meeting this evening. Um, and uh, you anticipate any other growth at that building, or is that nurse practitioner is that going to expand that business? Like that? I don't think so. But is there room there. for it to expand? Uh, I'm not sure. This is new to her too, leaving the doctor's office to start a new building. So it may not even go. She's given it a shot, I think. I think there's enough reserve space within the system to. Yeah. The other thing to consider too is that, you know, using the 250 <coughs> gallons per day per doctor, as George alluded to, that includes support staff. That includes certain things that would occur under a doctor's license. A nurse practitioner can do a much more limited amount of things With without staff. the doctor being in the same building. So I don't think we'd see you know, some of the procedures or the caseloads and, and whatnot that you would see. So it is kind of a unique use. And if it does operate as an office, that is what the system was designed for, was office use. But we just, nurse practitioner isn't one of the things on the list, so we... So no, so I'm so familiar so with... So, so, so something like this is very, very specific. And then we basically present the specific case with the current water usage and then make sure that the board is comfortable. With I'm comfortable it. making a motion to approve the variance for 105 wash. Uh, I second that. I would, you can also just for, you know, you can put some conditions in there that you want to see water meter readings for the next six months or that you want it inspected in a year just to make sure that it's not getting ahead of itself. It I, might not be necessary. It, with what he's saying for the reserve, Coming here half. Yeah, um, I think houses are more it, concerning it, on the aseptics. And the other thing is that the building is, I did the math, it's like at 83% capacity right now, and then if we fill this, it'll be like 95% capacity. So uh, so the, the building is already, uh, so I, like I said, I think we have lots of uh, safety factor here. Um, Does Amanda's Fitness have showers, Dana? No. Okay. Just the toilet. And what do you guys think? I, I don't. I, I, I just figured this was the cleanest way to go through the process. Yeah. And, no, I, I don't. Have it, yeah. Guys, if if it were like at the limits of the system, then I'd kind of be like, all right, maybe we need to inspect every year. But. No, I'm just putting I've it on seen, the table. Yeah. You have I a agree. Lot yeah, of I'm wiggle. Good, I'm good with it. Yeah, I make a motion to approve. Second. All right. Thank you very much. All those in favor? Yeah. 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 Yes. Mills, yes. All right. Yeah, good night. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, George. Nice good luck. Good, good luck, sir. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you.
Next, well regulations. Okay, um, we had kind of tabled this for the summer to give, give a chance for um, Paul, Paul to take a look at it and stuff. And at this point, I wanted to see if you guys any, any questions, any, any, any change changes that you want me to. Um, and you're going to have to help me. You guys are the, the subject matter expert. I get that. So I thought there was discussion that if you were going to do potable water on a private well, that they were going to have to have some sort of PFAS treatment at their house. Is that accurate or not? PFAS treatment at their yeah. house? Yeah. No, but we did put in the well regulations that they should have it tested for it. So it's a recommendation yes. for the testing? Because yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Right? So, um, okay. Is it a shall or is it a mandatory? It was. <laughs> he has it in front of him. It was a recommended. Yeah. The PFAS test alone um, is, I think, $1,200 yeah. just to have it done. It's seven to $1,200 are the two prices I got for PFAS. So we wanted people to see it and say, hey, it's recommended. Um, it's up to you. We could change that and, and ask for it with potable wells only to give us. I kind of like how it's recommended. Like, I give them, yeah. like okay. when they get their permit, to give them some literature on it. But it's like I mean, a number of other things too, like radon testing. It's, right, it's right. advised. Yeah. Right, nobody's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm cautious to, to mandate what people do in their home when they're installing. You know what I mean? Like as long as here, here's what we can provide for you of what. So you're educated right. on it. And, and, and talk yourself about radon, something else, and well water. Like your act, activation level in a basement at four for radon. For a well, I think it's like ten thousand in mm -hmm. water. It be it just the, the way the numbers work out. So um, yeah. So any other questions? I mean, no. That was my main concern. I just yeah. didn't want to. I just didn't want to overregulate people into bankruptcy. Right. So. And and the, the other reason I I highlighted the 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 one. The, the statement that states that, you know, if you must follow the town's water ban thing, and I want to make sure you guys are okay with that as well, because that was already in the reg. I Okay. All right, then. <laughs> so what we'll do, if everyone's okay with it, um, we'll set it up to be put on for a hearing, which has to have certain things need to be done, like... Uh, has to be in a, a, a printed newspaper twice for two weeks, a certain notifications and whatnot, stuff like that. So we'll do it and aim for the September meeting. Does that sound? I'm good with that. No. Right. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Next, uh, waiving fees for the food vendors at the Blanchings Ribbon Cutting Ceremony, which is the 20th, 20th. of yes. August. Yep. I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's Sunday, I believe. Sunday. So the schools have been uh, getting some food trucks um, to come down for the event, ice cream truck, a hamburger, a hot dog truck. Um, we, as staff, cannot waive the fees. However, it is for the school. It is for Motion to waive the fees. Okay. okay. No. All right. All those in favor? All right. Hills, yes. Same thing for the Eastern yeah, Cultural just gonna Concert. Say that. Yeah, it looks like it's... <laughs> Motion to waive the fees for the food vendors at the Eastern Cultural Concert Series. Second. Mills, yes. yes. And yes. Yeah, and again, like we've, we've discussed in the past, the whole reason for us having them get maybe, the permit is just for safety. We don't... The maybe, fees mean um, nothing to we us. We can put for next month's meeting, or we can extend that authority to you guys. I will take that up with town council and see how we do that because yeah. I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. That's, I mean, that's housekeeping. You know, it's not like, <clears throat> no, I want them to pay fees. Right. <laughs> no, and then you guys should be able to side, do that without, from our yeah. side. We don't. The fee is not. It's not a significant amount, even if it is being charged. Right. It's more so that they're checking in with us, and we have the opportunity to make sure that what's being put out there in the community is safe food product. So. You still need to know who's there, right? Right. right. Yeah. right. So they still yeah. go through the whole registration process. Okay. We just wait. You're just waving the fees. That's right. Betterments, 23 Picker Lane. Yes. So systems and failure. Um, they are looking for the 45,000 uh, to replace their um, cesspool, which is falling apart. Um, and they're, they're in good standing with the town. Motion mm -hmm. to approve Betterments for 23 Picker Lane. Second. All those in favor? Me and yes. Those yes. The dreaded 
West Nile virus <laughs> <laughs> has reared its ugly head. How would it not with the rain? Right. I, I'm been well, they don't grow in swamps. They grow in catch basins. I've been Still, the rain. <laughs> right. But the rain actually creates flow as opposed to standing water. I just, I, I am so, I'm harder. surprised because I remember it was right before that year before COVID, we had to have an emergency meeting or something, or maybe it was a little. That was triple A. Yeah. That would yeah. have been triple yeah. A. Yeah. Um, West Nile, we had one positive last year in July and never saw another one. Um, you know, we, we just recently had one, is that it? Yep, you yeah. I sent you an email with yep. the press release, um, and that's just the normal process that we take. We're still at low risk. It's, it's I one. checked it today, yeah. Um, we, Mark was on vacation, so Tim helped get uh, notice out to all the camps so that the camp um, directors could take the extra effort and ensure that the kids were using protective measures. It's just one of those things. West Nile... You know, it's more making everybody aware that it's out there, and um, it's it not as predictable as far as the risk factors as when we have a triple E, um, and that becomes like a dusk and dawn type of thing, and other actions might be needed. But for right now, we had no second one this week, correct? Not that I've seen. Nothing came in, and I... I looked at the risk map actually about two hours ago and was still at low. I suspect it's going to be a tough September. I could be wrong, but hope for a cold snap. Oh, <laughs> I get I'm, later and later every year. I know. I'm yeah. ready to break out the flannel. I've had it with some <laughs> done. I was just in Houston, so <laughs> hot, right? And then Baton Rouge, yeah. Oh, oh taking. Triple digits, right? school. Uh, she was, her internship wrapped up in Houston, yeah. so I flew to Houston to drive to Baton Rouge with her. I was in Baton Rouge, nice and cool down there. Yeah, Houston was hotter. <laughs> <laughs> Houston's uh, humid, it's always humid, yeah, every mm -hmm. constantly. Baton, I swear that storm yesterday was like a mini tornado. I slept through it. <laughs> I took an old man nap. I was just <laughs> watching what it did to my pool furniture, it's like... So it was the strangest thing. Yeah. So we'll continue to monitor. The state is out there testing, collecting samples weekly. Um, the report usually comes out on Mondays with the results from the week before. Um, if we receive another notification, we'd follow the same process. We have a checklist of who we notify, um, what the press releases look like. Um, so just keep an eye on your email. We'll do some social media posting if need be. How are the surrounding towns doing? I don't think you anybody think around us really. What, a, lot, a lot of metropolitan areas are getting yeah, the West Nile like line. Really? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> they like the catch basins. Mm. Well, it originated in New York City. The, the vector, the bird vector that it's in, um, it does tend to be more city oriented. Okay. What's next? Uh, accepting the minutes of the June 12, 2023 meeting. And I will happily make a motion to accept. I'll second that. All those in favor? Yes. yes. No, yes. Staff notes. Staff. <laughs> <laughs> well, saying to Kristen, last week was uh, Mark was out. We haven't had a foodborne illness uh, investigation in, in quite some time, and then I get two in two days. So really? <laughs> yeah. So. Yep. And neither one. No. Appear yeah. to be anything for us to be concerned yeah. about. Um, with most foodborne illnesses, people remember the last thing they ate or the last suspect thing that they ate. How does that get reported to you? Like uh, the, the person through Maven? Um, we get contacted through the, the infectious disease uh, also protocol. They, they seek treatment somewhere. Yeah. Yes. So they both uh, both cases went to doctor's office. Your GI yeah, yeah. It gets back here. And it comes back this way. Yeah. Yeah, one was, was one Campylobacter, and the other was Shigella. Shigella, yeah. yeah. So um, the Shigella was genetically tied to seven, seven other, other cases. cases. Um, they don't have any food commonalities to them. Um, and our normal process is then to just go out to the food establishment that may have been reported by the person, and we do what's called a HACCP on the actual food. So it's a hazard analysis of critical control points. So if it's lobster salad, 
We look at how the lobster came into the building, how it was handled, where it was stored, how the mayonnaise, did they make their own mayonnaise? We look for anywhere along the chain of preparation where something could have gone wrong. Neither one of these cases had any um, spots along the trail through the building that we, Tim judged that anything could have gone wrong. So, um, Other than that, you saw the email from um, me regarding interface. So the um, yes. mental health referral system is up and running. Um, we'll be meeting in the coming weeks that eligibility for that is anyone that lives in town and anyone that attends a public school in town. Um, so while the schools are on board and actually were the ones who put our name on the list for it, um, in the coming weeks we'll be meeting with Southeast Regional because every student that attends there is also able to avail themselves of the system. Um, about 50% of the communities that send students there are like Easton or in the network, so they would get credited back against that network. Um, but there are some towns, some kids and towns represented that are not. So it's we're going to catch some kids who might not otherwise have access to something like that. Oh, that would be good. I've heard nothing but good things about it. So. Yeah, it, it's supposedly... We're very excited. Yeah. We're very, very excited yeah. about it. I know somebody um, that's been a little bit involved with it, and they're very excited about it. The concern was, obviously, we'll get a lot of the word out through the schools, but what else are we doing to get the word out? Yep, so we did a press release mm -hmm. um, with the police and fire. Um, we have, because we have, as part of our staff, the community mental health liaison person, so a lot of outreach is, she's doing a lot of work with the police department. Yeah. So they're going out to individual calls after and trying to make connections. Follow up. That's yep, good. they've built out, um, historically, police had a domestic violence envelope yep. that the they packets. would hand out. Now they've expanded that into three different packets, all of which that will also have the interface contact card so that we're getting it out into the hands of people as police calls are yeah. out there. It's been added to, and it's consistent across our website. All of our web pages bear that same hyperlinked picture of Town Hall with the William James logos on it. So it should be very easy to find. It's yeah. on your web page. It's on Council on Aging's web page. Um, I just think, and I'm always concerned, and I know we talked about this with the Compass Medical issue, is the people that don't access the computers mm -hmm. regularly, they're yep. getting the information to whether they're the elderly, the handicapped, that sort of thing. That's always been my concern with not just this, but many other things. Yep, we're networking with the Commission on Disabilities, we're networking with um, the Human Rights Committee. Veterans agent, maybe? Get that out So veterans. he's our deputy director of, he's actually part of our command Good. staff, he's one of my two deputy directors. Um, Interface did give us like postcards too mm -hmm. that are at Frothingham Hall now. They'll be dropping some off at the food pantry, making some connections and getting them out into some of the churches. Um, yeah. All of those pieces yeah. that the community mental health liaison is working with um, so that there will be a physical card that people can actually take and, and call. Good. Perfect. Yeah, just getting the word out. That's the biggest thing. And I think the people that might benefit the most from that are not going to access it through the internet or other ways, so that's my concern. No, and that's why us having this broad umbrella where mm -hmm. we have the community mental health liaison and we have staff that knows what everybody else is doing. So over at Frothingham, you know, you have your benefits navigator who somebody might come in to be doing a fuel assistance application, but she's listening for all the other pieces and knows that right around, and we physically walk people to the next step and Good. say, here, why don't you sit and talk with this person for a little bit or at least take their card. Yeah, at least so get them their information. Yep. Good. So there's right. a lot of hand-holding, especially in that building. Um, and we will be presenting tomorrow, so the department head meeting tomorrow. Um, Stephanie and I will be presenting to all of the department heads as well so that you know somebody goes into the assessor's office and they're having financial trouble or having concerns or overly confused coming in trying to do abatement so that they're tuned into where is a resource that I might want to connect this person with. So um, we're getting a lot of face time with people that hopefully will just remember it exists and get that card into the right hands. Good. I'm encouraged. Thank you. The other thing that's going on staff notes wise is um, we've had an intern this summer, um, Bianca, 
and she has been working on building out um, activities and resources for September, which is National Emergency Preparedness Month. Um, so she's going to be, we're going to be offering in September some events where, especially at the Housing Authority and some of the other locations, um, we have these plastic envelopes that the state provided to us, and we're going to help some of those at-risk people. For you and I, making a photocopy of our insurance policy is nothing. It, making a copy of my birth certificate is nothing. But if you're one of those at-risk individuals or lower-resourced people, we're actually going to bring a photocopier out with staff and say, here, we'll help you put the packet together. Um, That's she's, what I like to hear. She's working with the state. We're trying to get a repeat of years ago we did a event that was targeted at seniors and they actually gave away, um, the state came out and gave us 50 go bags that had everything in them if somebody needed to leave, leave their home. She hasn't gotten a good connection with that yet, but we're still going to keep plugging away at it. She has um, designed QR code cards and stickers and has been at the um, touch a truck events that we do at the town pool. She's been at the children's races trying to get people enrolled in code red which is the alert notification that comes mm -hmm. through on your phone. Um, the other thing I say to people, too, is get, get the code read for where your parents are or where your college kid is, too, so that they, you get the network alerts, even though you may not be the, you may be the one calling your mother and saying, hey, Mom, I know you don't look at your cell phone, but it's time to do this or it's time to do that. So we're kind of trying to expand that net as well. Very good. That's great. That's actually... Yeah, good advice. <laughs> well, you know, I did a blood pressure clinic a couple of weeks ago at uh, the elderly housing. And some are very organized and everything like mm -hmm. that. Some of them have a flip phone. And it's just, like, I remember not having cell phones, but mm. not well, you know. But Mark and I had to actually talk to each other in person in high school. Yep. You couldn't text. And that's why I got a D in typing. Yeah, right. Because I turned around and said, what are you doing this weekend, Chris? No. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I had to call Xfinity this week. Needless to say, it didn't go well. But the first thing I said to my wife was, how does an elderly person, if, my, if that were my parents, they would have just hung up and said, all right, I'm just not going to have any that for yeah. like, like, Or I'll just pay the bill. Yeah, it's, it's, there's a, there's a, a gap that needs to be bridged between that. And I don't, I really don't know how you do it. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's, it's become our, our phones are like our driver's license. That's our identity oh. wallet. Kristen and I have talked oh. about it a couple times. And when that comes, this medical thing happened. Yeah. I called, we talked. And yeah. I was like, look, I'm really worried. And, and personally, I'm still navigating that. Yep. I was on the phone with someone today. I mean, it's insane. So if you're 85 years old, you don't understand all this. You're going to get lost, and you're probably, to your point, they could give up with the prescriptions or the health care or anything like that. That's why I was so concerned yep. about that when that I'm, I'm when actually that presented itself. So at work, if people are managing because that comes up, and like, no, it, it. I think after that first shock, people, if you're going to the doctors, they're they would persevere. I'm sure there's some people that have slipped through the cracks, but. Yeah. Um, well, we did. We kind of pushed to be able to get yeah. paper applications and, and get you know means of doing it. No, kudos, Plus the fact kudos that staff over from yeah. him will just sit down and do it with them. Um, We're very fortunate that we have the setup we have. I'm seeing a lot of COVID again. We were you seeing so a couple of weeks ago. We did, I did get something through one of I sit as the Massachusetts representative on the Nat, on the Nacho board, the National Association of County and City Health Officials, and we had something released to us that was on hold um, from the press that was seeing that little bit of uptick. Mm. We're seeing a little bit of an uptick in some of our congregate settings. We've had a couple of. Um, it's not people aren't deathly ill. No. No, they have a cold, just, and and it's like they casual. The, the, it's, the, yeah, it's not coming through the maven either. No, it's, these are the ones like I yeah. dealt with, like as a paramedic or yeah. whatever, and mm -hmm. and um, it's it's more of they have the test at home, like oh, I'll just take a test. Heck of it, I don't feel very well. Like oh my god, I cope. Like it's not. 
I don't think that variant that's out there is, unless you guys know something different, is, is like you know, from three years ago. It's No, it doesn't seem to be a more virulent yeah. um, almost, variant. We are also seeing foot traffic coming in asking for tests, especially people that are traveling, yeah. that are either have are planning on traveling internationally or returning from international mm -hmm. travel. They're coming in and grabbing like 10 tests. So we have tests time. here that people, the public can. Absolutely. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Absolutely. So we have got six pieces. boxes today to our address. Do we have, uh, are we prepared for the school opening for if we need an increase in the test? Kits? Yep, we've got we enough have, kits we downstairs. <laughs> we could probably send a couple home with every like guest, which is what we, we did yeah. last year um, at going into one of the breaks. We sent two kits home with every child uh, and every staff member. So, no, we have plenty downstairs. Okay. Um, and we do, you know, hist work with them to say, do you want to get them out? Um, you guys have been taking them to the children's races. Yep. Yeah. So that was canceled last week. So. Oh, that's awesome. I took them two um, weeks ago to the Yeah. Training. I had Mark going with Bianca because she had never been exposed to that type of thing with her code red cards and talking about emergency preparedness. Just a good opportunity for us to have a table with the COVID kits, with the mosquito information, just public outreach. In, um, in tick. Tick and mosquito, yep. Yep, tick cards. Um, actually, that's one thing, Christina, our public health nurse, has seen an uptick in as well, is um, some of the tick-borne illnesses that are coming through Maven. I'm just finishing up my doxycycline today, so my last <laughs> dose <laughs> myself, so, yep. 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 All right, hey, do you have anything else? I have nothing else, so I will make a motion to adjourn. Oh, wait, before I do, uh, so are we going to have the meeting at 6 o'clock next month, or are we going to still do 5, or do we have to formally vote on that? You just need to provide direction to the staff. I guess what my question to all of you is, what do you it's think? It's a sad state of affairs that people are taking my direction. Well, so. I'm bypassing you. I'm asking them. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're here with 7.30 anyway, so. I'm sorry? We're here with 7.30 no, I, get that, but I think it's better for the residents that are coming in. I think it's better at 6. 6 o'clock? Because you, you think that, assuming people so. are working. If they're not working, it shouldn't matter. But if they are working, maybe that extra hour. So maybe. 6 o'clock. And then we can visit once Ari is back, too. Yep. So next, let them the shoot for next month at 6. September's meeting, we'll, we do have a variance request that's coming in, so it, I do need to let them know. So we'll yep. get to 6 p.m. Sure. Yep. Motion to adjourn at 1832 hours. That's 632 to the lay person. 532. 532. Well done. <laughs> 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 it's on the mind. All those in favor? Yes. Mills, yes. All right. We're done. Thank you.